You are the owner of the Abbey Food and Bar, an iconic gay bar in the iconic gay neighborhood of iconic West Hollywood. And we're going to be celebrating 30 years this coming month, May. May. So you opened in May of 1991. Correct. A lot has happened since then, especially in the gay community. I, I mean, that, that was sort of the, the tail end of the height of the AIDS epidemic, right? That's correct. Um, at the time, I was across the street with 1,100 square feet, maybe seven employees. Um, and that's where um, the Los Angeles chapter of ACT UP would meet to have their meetings and to start all their marches for us to go out onto the streets, tell people to get out of the bars into the streets, and we'd do our marches up to the Mormon Church in, in West LA and go through Hollywood, um, get our voices heard. Um, so it was. A lot different than this pandemic. You know, this pan the AIDS pandemic killed people, a lot of people. This pandemic uh, of, of the virus of COVID also killed a lot of people, but it also killed a lot of businesses. Um, I don't want to say which was worse. They were both horrific. Um, so we had to deal with that. Um, you know, during this past virus, the Abbey had to open and close four times based on the health department. Um, I closed by choice the first time, uh, about four days before the government shut us down because I saw what was happening in uh, cities throughout Europe. And I said, this is going to get bad and I want to close it down. Um, and then between that, we had, remember the LA riots, we had the Northridge earthquake. So we get our share here, but um, we always make it through. I have to be honest with you, a couple of times this past year, I didn't know if I would make it. Things were extremely, extremely tough. When you order $40,000 worth of produce and, you know, um, meats and cheeses and, and, and pastries, and then you get that all delivered, and then they say all restaurants have to close until further notice. I mean, in fact, immediately. They're like, what? You know, um, they, they didn't really work so well with the restaurant groups, the hospitality group. But, you know, the main important thing was to keep everyone safe, you know, to keep our employees safe, keep our customers safe. So we're seeing a little light out the end of the tunnel right now. So we're hoping. But a couple of times I didn't think I would make it. You've had to survive uh, a lot, just not over the past year, but over the past 30 years, the, the gay community has changed a lot. You know, we've become more more widely accepted. And I, th I think that's had an effect on, gay there aren't as many gay bars because you can just go to a bar. Exactly. Is, that's true. When I first came to Los Angeles, I came to Los Angeles to be in West Hollywood because I was just coming out from college. And I felt West Hollywood gave me this safe haven. And, um, you know, I always had a dream one day I would love to have a bar, you know. And I started off as a coffee house and a bakery, and then it went into a cafe, and then it went to a bar, and then it went into a nightclub. And then I kept every element. I, if you're on the dance floor, you want a piece of chocolate cake, I'm going to sell you that chocolate cake, you know. But it has changed. And, um, you know, I, my policy was when I opened, especially being in Hollywood, um, and we have the celebrity crowd, which is a plus, but every one of my guests, there's no velvet rope. Everyone is treated equally. I don't care what your background is, what your sexual preference is, um, what your color is. You are treated as my VIP, like you're in my living room. And, you know, unfortunately, some of the bars in the 80s, if you wanted, you know, hot muscle boys, you would go to this bar. If you were a lesbian, you would go to this bar. If you wanted you know, Latino boys, you would go to this bar. Everyone had a specific. Well, now as time went on and things got more accepted, those bars, unfortunately, was losing their clientele um, and, 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 and closed a lot. Um, and now the, the Abbey, the Abbey has, when you look across what I, what I really enjoy, it's like, you know, the, the big melting pot. It's, you look from people who are 21. I had a table two Sundays ago, three tables that all within 
I say 20 minutes. A group of gentlemen celebrating their friend's 90th birthday, and they love the Abbey. They've been coming here for years and years and years. I had a straight couple that met his, who met on a blind date here, got engaged to her here, got married here, and was celebrating the second anniversary. And then, um, there you go. Um, that other, you know, they, it was young, young boys out, you know, celebrating a, a wonderful Sunday afternoon. So it, it was a great melting pot. So you had a straight couple that met in your bar on a blind date. Who, who sets up a blind date for two straight people to meet in a gay bar? I want to know. Right. <laughs> that's, that's a story that I want to hear. Yeah, it, it happens a lot, believe it or not. Huh. A lot, we, you know, and, 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 and I'm going to give you the reverse. I also get once in a while, not as much anymore, uh, wow, you're letting too many women in here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a gay bar. And I'm like, no, 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 listen. Is, isn't this what we've been fighting for all our rights to be equal? So you, you're not going to a straight restaurant and then I'm going to go, oh, look at the gays there. No, it's everyone's welcome here. We're, we're, this is what we've been fighting for our whole lives to be uh, equal. Um, and equality is extremely important here. You know? um, so it, what are your thoughts on how the gay community has changed over the past 30 years? Now that it's, yeah, I mean, it used to be that you could be cool and unique just by being gay. But now that's normal and accepted, which is wonderful. It's normal and accepted. But yeah. it's, a, it's a cultural <laughs> change. It's a cultural change. I think it's for the better. We still have a lot to, you know, in LA, um, and probably in Brooklyn, where you are, we, we might live in a little bubble that we don't see the hatred, you know, not only to our community, but to the black community, the Asian community. So we might live in a bubble where we love everybody, but you go out of our bubble and it's not like that. So, you know, I, I think, um, you know, the, myself, I'm very politically involved. The Abbey has always been politically involved. We've hosted here, my, here at the Abbey or events from uh, Hillary Clinton. We, we started an event for Barack Obama. We've done three events for Kamala Harris. I announced her as our, she called me once she announced for president. I did her first fundraiser at my house after she was running for Senate. I did her first, her first before she written that name for president, her first fundraiser as a Senator. Uh, I did one for Gillibrand and it's great. She, she did a pop-up here when she was, you know, going to debate for vice president, uh, when she was debating for president. Um, so people know that the Abbey is more, of a bar, a restaurant, a bakery. It's their, also their home to get away. It's their safe haven. It's um, a place to meet friends, meet new, 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 you know, new friends um, or a lover. It, you know, it's multiple, which is fantastic. Well, yeah. Uh, do you plan to stay there for another 30 years? Um, well, <laughs> My 30th anniversary was May, is May 23rd, and I planned on stepping down a little bit. Um, I bought a house on the East Coast that I really plan on spending some time in, on the beach. Um, and now with this new project of Robertson, I know it's gonna take a couple months of my attention to it to make it to where I want it to be, what I want it to be. Um, I don't think I could ever leave uh, I'm a pretty hands-on owner. Um, I meet all my friends here. My friends, God love them. Whenever we, I'm like, okay, let's go out. Oh, let's go to the Abbey. I'm like, no, you guys, I've been there all day. No, no, let's go to the Abbey. And I don't know if they're thinking because I'm going to comp the meal or <laughs> their drinks, or it's just, it's, you know, I've had, I've had a driver who, I was with another big hoteler who wanted me to bring the Abbey to his hotels there. And we brought his plane back and his driver was there. And, you know, he said, drop me off at the, the um, uh, peninsula and take Mr. Cooley to the Abbey. And he said, yes, sir. It's always either 
it's either the Abbey or Disneyland whenever when I pick anyone up. And when he got out of the car, I'm like, I owe you so big. I'm the owner of the Abbey. He goes, oh, I had no idea. I go, thank you for saying that. That's so, great. Yeah, and you know, we have people who come to LA, they go, reason we come to LA is not because of LA. We come to LA because of the Abbey. So it's a really wonderful compliment. 